Welcome to part 2 video series entitled Kinds and Types of Research. Ngayon naman, we will discuss to you some of different research sa iba't ibang larangan or kinds of research across fields. It aims to describe the population, situation, or phenomenon. Commonly, ginagamit ito if you want to identify the characteristic, frequency, and category. It answers the what, where, when, and how questions. Descriptive research is useful when there is not a lot of information available regarding to your topic or problem. So, itong research na to ang panimula kung paano mo hahanapin ang mga bakit sa mga bagay-bagay. Again, descriptive research aim to understand the how, what, when, and where it happened. Here are the examples. Let's say, do senior high school students prefer play Mobile Legend or Wild Drift? What are the most popular online shopping websites among senior high school students? Okay. What is the student's academic performance in general mathematics? Another example, what are the common misconceptions on vaccine? Next, what is the satisfaction level of Ankle San Pedro customers? Hmm. Here are more examples. What are the sleeping habits? of senior high school student in MNHS. What do teenagers consider when buying a new phone? What are the students' preferred snacks available in the school canteen? Or let's say, what is the level of, of marketability of personalized phone cases of MNHS students? What is the student rates of progress after the exposure to modular approach for instruction. Next, what's the student academic performance in general mathematics? What is the BMI rate of sports students? Or let's say, what are the feelings and reaction of the students on Picasso abstract works? Naranasan mo na bang sukatin kung kakasya ba ang bewang ng pantalon gamit ang iyong leeg? Hmm. O sinukat mo din ba kung magkasing laki ba ang iyong paa at iyong braso? Those are just simple example of determining if two variables are correlated. Correlated means you are looking for a possible relationship of two variables but not if one truly affects or the cause of the others. Correlational study defined as the design measures relationship between two variables without controlling any of the variables. It aims to determine the strength or magnitude and the direction of the relationship between variables. Let's say the variables are x and y. Kung si x ba ay may connection, association, relationship, or correlation kay y. Hmm. O wala means totally nothing. Zero correlation. Or meron naman kaso very weak relationship. Like drinking coffee to height. Kung may connection or relationship naman ang dalawang variables, anong direction nito? Hmm. Next, kung meron, ano ang strength or its magnitude na kanilang relationship? It can be described between a uh, weak to a strong relationship. 
The direction can be either direct or indirect relationship. Direct or positive correlation. Both variables change in the same direction. When the first variable increases, then the second variable also increases or vice versa. Let's say as the height increases, weight also increases. Taller people tend to be heavier. Next, indirect relationship or negative correlation. The variables change in opposite direction. Let's say when x increases, y decreases or vice versa. When x decreases, the y increases. So let's say the height above sea level and temperature. As you climb the mountain, it increases by height. It gets colder, decrease in temperature. What I have found in the internet. So here are some of the example of correlational study. First, the study of Garcia, Cheong, and Abuyo 2015 about correlation of academic performance and grit among the College of Arts and Science Batch 2014 student of Lyceum of the Philippines Laguna. Another study from Kiblasan J and Kiblasan A, Payagan L, Dulnuan R, and Singson and Uy 2015 about correlational study on hypertension and dietary regimen among young adults in Bontok Mountain Province, Philippines. Another example for a correlational study, let's say. independent variables and measure its effect to one or more dependent variables, then it becomes experimental research. Again, for experimental research, we have the independent variables and then its effect to dependent variables. This is to test the idea whether it influences the outcomes. Basically, when the primary concern of the research is to establish a cause and effect relationship with manipulation, then it becomes experimental research. So, anong pinagkaibahan ng correlation sa experimental research? Kung parehas naman silang may relationship. Kung ang mga variables ay hindi nag-undergo with manipulation or walang treatment, na ginawa sa kanila and it's simply describe both variables, the two variables and see if they have relationship then it become correlational Kung ang independent variables naman ay may pinagdaanan ng manipulation or dumaan siya sa proseso ng tinatawag nating treatment at titignan mo kung may magiging epekto ito sa dependent variables. Ito ay magiging experimental research. Aside from that, research with experimental design aims to create a set of procedure to test a hypothesis. Sa experimental research, may tinatawag na true experimental research and quasi-experimental research. In true experimental research design, the subject or the participant are randomly selected. While in quasi-experimental research design, the participant or the subject are based on non-random criteria. Narito ang ilan sa mga example na isang research na experimental.
medical research focuses primarily on the past, the what and how it happened in the past. It aims to describe, explain, and understand actions or events that occurred in the past. In the past. To learn how things were done in the past, to see if they might be applicable to the present day problems and concern. Or maybe it may assist us to make prediction. Market research. Conducting research is one of the best way to know how to boost your business. Knowing what to do to satisfy your customers when you want to discover why your customers are not buying your products or ikaw ba ay interested in launching a new product, services, or creating marketing campaign. Pero hindi ka sigurado kung ano nga ba ang gusto ng iyong target consumer. Then to help and guide you to answer those questions, conducting market research may assist you or it may help you. Again, market research was defined as the action or activity of gathering information about consumers' needs and preferences. Sa pamamagitan nito, you may discover your target market. Pwede din makakolek ng opinions from experts or consumers that assist you in making decision related to your business, whether small or big or if you are handling an organization, di ba? So, marketing research is important because one, it provides valuable information about the value of existing and new product. Two, customer essential. It helps to determine what the customer's needs and wants. Third, forecast. Businesses can also forecast their production and sales. Last, competitive advantage. Businesses can devise business strategies that can help them to stay ahead of their competitors. The data may gather using survey, focus group discussion, in-depth interviews, observation, and field trials. Next, feasibility study. Feasibility study is simply an assessment of the practicality of a proposed plan or project. It's designed to reveal whether a project or plan is feasible. Is this achievable, attainable, passable, practicable, workable, reasonable, or something acceptable? Ito ay part ng initial design stage of any project or plan. It conducted in order to objectively uncover the strength and weaknesses of a proposed project or an existing business. Feasibility studies also help professionals do the first plan a course of event to complete the project. Second, identify the challenges that could arise. Third, to list potential solutions that will come about as a result of the project. The different types of feasibility study are first, legal feasibility. It's performed to understand if the proposed plan conform the legal and ethical requirements. Second, economic feasibility involves a cost-benefits analysis to identify how well or how poorly a project will be concluded. Third, technical feasibility, a process of validating the technical resources 
and capabilities to convert the ideas into working systems. Four, operational feasibility. Perform to understand well a proposed system solves the problem. Five, scheduling feasibility. Measure of how reasonable the project duration is. Here is a step-by-step -step guide to help you write your own feasibility study. First, describe the project. Second, outline the potential solution resulting from the project. Third, list the criteria for evaluating the solution. Fourth, state which solution is more feasible for the project. And last, make a conclusion statement. Nakaisip ka na ba na maging takbo ng iyong research project? Naway natulungan namin kayo. See you in our next video. Thank you for listening. Please do not forget to subscribe, like, and share. See you in our next video again. I'm Ma'am Hazel from Research Team. Zooming out. Annyeong!